Now let's connect all the components to each other and to the motherboard. This is the DVD-ROM drive. Here is the connection for the audio cable. Here are the jumpers for configuring the drive. Make sure you have set these to the slave setting as we described in Chapter 9. Next is the IDE interface connector. And this is the connector for the power cable. Here we have the audio cable that will connect here and then attach to the sound card. This is the ribbon cable that will plug into the IDE interface connector. The connector has a notch so it will only fit in one way. This is the power cable. It plugs in here. It can only fit in one way, so make sure you have it in the proper orientation when you try to plug it in. Here you see I have connected the IDE ribbon cable to the DVD-ROM drive. As you can see, there is another connector near the middle of the IDE ribbon cable. I can connect this to the hard drive. I will plug it in now so you get the idea. We will actually be connecting it later when I do the other hard drive connections. Now I am ready to connect the power cable to the DVD-ROM drive. The next drive I will connect is the floppy drive. This small white connector is the power connection for the floppy drive. It will connect right here. This is the floppy I.O. cable. It will connect to the floppy drive here. After you have connected the power cable and I.O. cable to the floppy drive, we can move on to the hard drive. This is the IDE interface connector of the hard drive. You will notice it is exactly the same as the connector on the DVD-ROM drive. Here we have the jumpers for the drive. Make sure you have set these to the master setting as we described in Chapter 8. After you have connected the ribbon cable and the power cable to your hard drive, we can look at our work. Here we have the connections of the DVD-ROM drive, the audio cable, the IDE ribbon cable, and the power cable. The floppy drive I.O. cable, the floppy drive power cable, the hard drive IDE ribbon cable, and finally the hard drive power cable. Now we can begin connecting the drives to the motherboard. First, we can connect the cable coming from the floppy drive to the floppy drive interface connector. This connector will be labeled on your motherboard. Next, we will connect the IDE ribbon cable that is attached to the hard drive and DVD-ROM drive. This needs to plug in to the primary IDE interface connector. This will also be labeled on your motherboard. Make sure the connection is nice and snug. Here you can see all of our drive connections are complete. You might want to review this section if anything is unclear. Also, if you are having problems identifying any of the connectors, you should consult your motherboard manual for a diagram of your specific board. Now we can connect the power connector to the motherboard. This wire harness is attached to the case's power supply and has a plastic plug that will fit into your motherboard. The plug will only fit in one way, so make sure you have the correct orientation. Now we are almost done. In the next chapter, we will review our work and put the final touches on our PC.